the deal. If you get to the top of the tree, all the fruit from the bottom at the top is going to be there, son. So I don't need you focusing on cars and money and stuff. You're going to get that. I need you to focus on why you were born in the first place. Why are you here on earth for this particular time? What are you doing here? You need to tell you that you owe you something. I don't want nothing from you but for you to leave this room and know what you want. What do you want in your marriage? What do you want with your son and your daughter? What do you want in your health? What do you want financially? Like how much money do you want to make a year? What do you want to drive? How do you want to live? Stop just waking up like an accident. What do you want? And then once you find out what you want, spend the rest of your natural life waking up and going after it. The reason why I speak with so much passion, ET, why do you speak with so, uh, so much authority? Because I'm talking about my life, not something that I read. I ate out of trash cans. You ain't got to start with the two-parent background. You ain't got to start with wealth. You ain't got to start with your parents graduated. It's not the hand that you dealt. You got rich kids who own drugs. You got rich kids who committed suicide. You got rich kids who, who don't know their purpose in life. It's not the hand that you was dealt, baby. It's how you play your hand. Every opportunity is the last opportunity. Every opportunity, I have to reprove myself again. Every opportunity, I'm still nervous. E.T., you've been doing this for years. Why are you so nervous? Because the day you become content, the day you stop evaluating yourself, the day you stop growing, the day you stop getting better is the day you die. Is the day the person who's trying to catch you will get you. And I ain't where I want to be. And I'm like, God, I ain't where I want to be. And he was like, you stop being a victim. I said, what you mean a victim? Well, it ain't my fault my mom got pregnant at 17. It ain't my fault my daddy wasn't there. It ain't my fault they couldn't get along. It ain't my fault. He said, boy, you, you grown. You ain't 10 no more. You, you, the decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. What you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? You've been lazy your whole life and now somebody told you you can make six figures and you go knock on the door a hundred times and your body say you a lie. You ain't never gave a hundred percent. In order to knock on the door a hundred times, you're going to have to get 120. Get up out of here. You can't do this. And you're going to have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Every day when I wake up, I got all kind of demands. You got all kind of demands. And the reason why you're not where you want to be is not because you're not great, but you taking all other people's stuff before you spend enough time with yourself to get to know you and get to know what you want and what you should do. And so please raise your hand with me if you're saying, E, from this day forward, I make a commitment to myself in a way I've never made a commitment to myself before. Let me see your hands. I said, I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight. I'm going to work. I'm going to press toward. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do everything in my power every single day. I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. A lot of people are saying, E, I'm scared. What if I do it and I fail? E, I'm scared, E. E, I want to do it. I got gifted. I'm gifted. I'm talented. I know I can write that song. I know I can produce that album. I know I can do that CD. I know I can write a book. I know I can get that degree, but I'm scared. So I'm telling you in life, you start running from a class, you start running from a subject that you don't like, it will haunt you for the rest of your natural life. It ain't going nowhere. But if you go after the fight, if you approach the challenge, you have a much better chance of winning. This the fight of your life, baby. Are you hearing me? This the fight of your life. This the fight of your life. And listen to me. If you're going to win the fight of your life, you can't be afraid to fight. All right? Some things don't come. They just not going to come to you because you want it as bad as you want to breathe. After you want it as bad as you, you got to put up the dupes, baby. And you got to be willing to fight that thing out. Are you hearing me?
fear, you are not gonna stop me. I'm not listening to that voice. I'm not listening to fear. I'm gonna move by faith. I've come too far to give up now. You got greatness all inside of you. You got greatness all inside of you. But your problem is you a scaredy cat. You saw, and every time it get hard, you quit and you give up. And I'm telling you, if you would be willing to fight your way through it, if you would be willing to fight your way through this battle, fight your way through cancer, fight your way through that academic struggle, fight your way through divorce, fight your way through it. If you are willing to fight your way through that singing career, fight your way through boxing, fight your way through football. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Fight your way through it. You gotta fight the fear because guess what? Fear ain't bigger than you. There's greatness in you. Are you hearing me? There's greatness in you. And you mean to tell me you're never gonna reach your full potential? You mean to tell me you're never going to be what you've been called to be? That you're not gonna do what you've been called to do because you are afraid? Listen to me, the boogeyman ain't real. And so I need you to, I need you to understand that you can have it. For real, you can have it, but it's gonna be a fight. And if you're willing to put up the fight, I'm telling you at the end of the fight, it's going to come victory. You've gotten this far. If you was going to quit, you should have quit a long time ago. You've come too far to quit now. You need to get a reward for it. That's why I'm trying to tell you, never stop. Never give up. Never give in. Your boy was a high school dropout. Your boy was homeless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I slept in abandoned buildings, baby. You say, how did you get here, E? Because one day I got up and stopped being a victim, and I was a victor. Are you hearing me? And I took that one class, and that one class turned into two classes, and I got my GED. And then I went to college, and yep, I told you it took 12 years, but what did I do? I never stopped fighting. It got harder, and it got harder, and it seemed the further I climbed, the harder it got. But I didn't stop, I didn't quit. I just kept fighting and fighting, and then I got to the Masters, and it was hard harder than the four year and it was harder than the GED but what did I do I got here not because I'm the strongest not because I'm the fastest not because I'm the best but I kept fighting and fighting and fighting your boy got through the masters now we at the end of the PhD baby oh you're not hearing what I'm saying now we got the dissertation and I ain't no writer and I ain't no intelligent dude and I ain't no scholar then you say how you gonna get the PhD Cause I keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and what I, what I will not do is I will not quit. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will not defeat me. You will not destroy me. Lay hold of it. Some of you are so ignorant. You've been through so much hell. You gonna quit now? You should have quit 10 years ago when you got raped. You should have quit 10 years ago when he walked out on you. You should have been quit. You don't quit now, it's the 10th round. You got two more to go. And when you get to success, it's not about skill. When you get to a certain level of success, it's about stamina. It's about stamina. It's about you won't break me. You can't take me. I fought too long. I fought too hard. If I was going to quit saying you should have got me a 17 home. You should have fought me when I was eating out of trash. Yeah. It's too late now. I'm in the rich carpet. It's too late now. Because I keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. It's too late. I got people's lives out there. It's too late. You should have broke me a long time ago. I'm unbreakable now. One day I made a decision that enough is enough. I'm tired of being average. I'm tired. I'm tired of being good. I'm tired. I want to go to the dealership and buy the best car. I want to move to the nicest neighborhood. I want to fly first class. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to Australia. I, want, I made a decision. Enough is enough. It's showtime. Will a real Eric Thomas please stand up? 
some of you in the room right now, you are where you are, you're giving 60% when you have 120 in you. Why? Because you've never made a decision. Shh, there are those of you in this room, you already there. Your problem is this and stuff. You don't want to give up to go on. You're talented. You just don't want to give up sleep. Listen to me, pound for pound, any agent in the room, pound for pound, motivational speaker, pound for pound, entrepreneur, pound for pound, athlete, pound for pound, weightlifter, pound for pound, whatever you do, I guarantee you when you do it, nobody can do it like you do it. The problem is you don't hardly do it. You love sleep too much. You love that alcohol too much. You love that substance too much. You love that vice too much. There's something that you love more than yourself than your dream, than your goals. Watch what happens when you have a goal that only has two reasons. See how long that lasts. Watch a goal that has 50 reasons and see how you... There's some, somebody called me the other day on an interview, stupid question. E.T., what do you feel like on the days that you don't feel like? I said, ask, ask the question again, please. Well, what do you do on the days that you don't feel like so I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm way past that. Every day I feel like. Every day I feel like eating. Every day I feel like giving my wife the best life. Every day I feel like driving in a nice car. Every day I feel like flying first class. Every, every single day of my life, I feel like giving a hundred percent. Every single day, somebody said yesterday, ET, you gave 120. What you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I don't know, get 140. I don't know, but I don't have days where I don't feel like it. Why? Because I'm counting on me. My wife's counting on me. I don't have days to waste. No more 50%, no more. No more 70%, no more. I want us at 85 to climb. I want you at 85 and climbing. If you're at 80, I want you at 90, and I mean moving rapidly. It's not rocket science. And the universe is not responding to you correctly because your body language sucks. Your spirit sucks. It's defeated. I need you to give me that 120. I need you to give me that everything you do. I need you to start giving me that 120 in everything you do. Bring it all, all together. Bring all the energy, all the passion. Bring it all together and dominate. That I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. Sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. No, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. I'm about to get busy now. Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the street. Stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got I to gotta breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. A lot of us are more adamant about the ideology of our beliefs than we are about our real beliefs. You feel what I'm saying? Like a lot of us care more about like the, the, the idea of the dream or the idea of our philosophy, but we're not really doing what we, you feel me? But if you think I'm doing it, I feel better about the fact that you think I'm doing this than I'm really doing it behind closed doors. You feel me? So it's almost like this generation, you know, and I'm sure it's not just this generation, I apologize, but in generations, there are people who would prefer to look rich than really be rich. I'm telling you, you need to grow because you're still holding on to everything and you don't understand the reason why you're holding on to everything is because of your insecurities. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Like, like you, you. This the third year you said you was gonna do certain things, and you mm-hmm. haven't done them. And it, all of us are brilliant. So there's no reason that you that brilliant in three. It's taking you three years. Matter of fact, it ain't take you three years. You still haven't got it yet. You're still piecemealing it. Why are you piecemealing it? Because you're not dealing with a a realer issue. Mm. The realer issue is you want control. You're insecure. You feel that by helping other people, it's going to diminish you for some reason. That's mm. not the truth. The truth of the matter is LeBron can go to whatever team he want in the NBA. Mm-hmm. The truth of the matter is Steph, yes. anybody would take Steph yep. and fight for Steph. Any free, anytime these boys free agents, the market is fighting for these boys. And they spending $250,000. You know what I'm saying? Baseball, they spending $450 uh, million. Dollars. I'm sorry. Uh, these boys getting millions and millions of dollars. So for me, the first thing I realized was leverage is having something other people need. Period. Mm, Don't make it mm, deeper than that. Mm, <laughs> like, I like it, it. it ain't no deeper than that. It's you have a product or a service that is needed. Now, I didn't even say uh, needed by the masses. I was talking to TJ today. You know, he's doing a phenomenal job in terms of he's grown as a speaker. Yeah. So now I can give him opportunities. And he was like, yeah, yeah I had a video that went up 9,000. Uh, I got 9,000 views. I said, do me a favor. This is not... 2008 where views mean something okay why am i saying that because people could pay for stuff when we first started doing it if you had a hundred thousand people following you it was really a hundred thousand people following you now it's the robot it's the ads bro you can pay to get nine thousand people to see your stuff so i was like tj that's not what you want you want to add value he's like what does that mean i was like just because nine thousand people watched it it don't mean you added value to nine thousand people it's just telling you that the numbers said, I said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to make sure that the football coach is watching that joke and going, mm-hmm. I need to hire you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's totally, that's a different mindset. Yeah. I need your speech to go up there and every football coach in the country go, we can't afford ET, we can't afford Inky Johnson. We need to get TJ, how much he costs. So that's number one. It is having a, a, a product or a service that's super valuable. I didn't read a book. I didn't get this from a book. I didn't get this from a conference. This is literally from being homeless. This is literally from sleeping in abandoned buildings. This is literally from dropping out of high school and eventually going back to high school and finishing college. Like this is trial and error and everything I'm going to share with you is lived. Nothing read, no no conferences from the bottom to the top and what I'm hoping to accomplish when I leave if somebody you've not really gotten started with the rest of your life you're like ET I'm I'm walking out of here next level right and then there's another group you kind of got started but like you playing with it like you're not putting forth 120 percent you're not all in and then for another group you're doing great but you're comparing yourself to other people and I want to push you to be phenomenal all right so I'm going to say it again all right I'm going to say it again you got to catch this that there's one group and I need you to know who you are. I need you to identify yourself. You're saying, I've got dreams, I have goals. There are things that I want to accomplish. I'm not satisfied. Like I don't sleep well at night. Like like ET, I I dream it ET, I want it ET. I look around at other people who are living a certain way, who, who, who are driving a certain way, who are experiencing life and ET, I want that. And, and I've robbed myself. I have not been true to myself. I've not done the things I need to do. And there's another group, ET, I got started, but I stop and start. I stop and start. I stop and start. And those two groups specifically, I want to speak to you and help you to get to a different level. So you got to do me a favor. All right. You got to do me a favor. There's somebody in the room. I just need you to think about it for one minute. And I want you to think about that thing or those things that you're saying, ET, there are some things that I have to get done. I have to get done the rest of August. I have to get done the rest of September. I have to get done in October. I have to get done in November. I have to get done before December. When the new year comes, there's some things I have to do. So if you're in the room and there's some goals that you've not, you've not uh, accomplished yet, you've not, you've not obtained yet, there's some things that you still need to get done. You're, you're at a, a place of desperation and you say, ET, I have to make this happen. I want you to raise your hand. Let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you said you were going to do, 
you're going to get to the next level. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. ET is saying, and it's ET, I'm being honest. The PhD was the only thing. The PhD was the only thing. And so every day, three o'clock in the morning, I spent an hour praying. I spent an hour working out. And then from that point, for about four or five hours, I just wrote, and I just wrote, and I just wrote, and I just wrote, and I just wrote. And now I'm seeing over a hundred and some pages. I probably got another good hundred to go and we're finished with this process. So what is it? What is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm gonna make my dreams become a reality? Now, if ET can do it, anybody can do it. They looked at the most successful men and women of the world and they found that they had like seven, eight things in common. And one of the things they all had in common was a routine. They are obsessed with their routine. They don't have a gap of wasted time they routine. You know, I realized the reason why I'm so successful and the reason why I don't get in trouble like I used to when I was younger is because when I was younger, man, my schedule had so many gaps in it. The devil had like, okay, he might pray at six, but my man is watching TV. He playing video games by 8.30. It's not that I'm sweeter than nobody. The devil can't get to me because all my time is taken up. And by the time he get to me, I'm asleep. I'm too sleep to out the sin. I'm just being real. 8.30, he like, Eric, you should. I'm like, bro, I'm tired. I can't. Come back to me tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, tip me tomorrow, bro. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm good. The, my body said, all you got to do is put your shoes on. That's the hardest thing you got to do. Just put your shoes on and I'll do the rest. I can't put your shoes on for you, but put your shoes on and then just go. And I just went and I, I was walking for the, I do the tw uh, 11 incline boy. And I was just walking for an hour and I was just like, you know what? It's almost an hour. I don't feel like running. My body was like, don't even worry about it. We'll get to that when we get to it. I did my hour, I was about to get off. My body was like, you know we run now. I said, what? We run now, let's go. You ain't tired. I said, I am tired. No, you're not. You just walk for an hour. You're not tired, Eric. Your brain is telling you some dumb stuff. If you were tired, you wouldn't have been able to walk for an hour. Okay, so let's do this. Just run for two minutes. I'm trying to help somebody right now go to a whole other level. The, Bible, the, the, the reason why you go back to sleep is because you've always gone back to sleep. It's like a default. You, you go back to sleep because you all, all you gotta do is stop going to sleep and then you're gonna stop going to sleep. All you gotta do is stop fussing and cussing and then you're gonna stop fussing and cussing. All you gotta do is stop spending all the money you got and start saving it. Listen to me, I became number one in the world. I became a millionaire not because I made more money. I became a millionaire because they told me millionaires only live off of 30% of their income. I want to make it plain for you. I became a millionaire because I did what millionaires did. I stopped living off 100%. I paid my tithe, and then I was like, all right, E, you only got 20% left. Put the rest up. So the first thing I did, listen to me, the very first thing I did to become rich, somebody said, E, to be rich, put six months of your earning to the side. I was like, all right, bet. That's what the rich told me to do. So I put six months to the side. How long did it take? I don't remember, but I put it to the side. Then somebody was like, yo, E, you need to put 100000 to the side. I was like, all right, 100000 DD, we're going to put 100000 to the side. Then somebody was like, yo, you need to get your credit score up to 800 I was like, all right, get my credit score up to 800 Then somebody said, E.T., if you want to be Tony Robbins, there's no way you'll be able to be like those dudes when you don't have the language they have. You need to go get your master's and a PhD from a white institution. I said, what? I went to Oakwood. I went to HBCU. He was like, yeah, but you didn't learn the language of Zig Ziglar at Oakwood. So Oakwood is a phenomenal place. Oh, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I just said something, you missed it. Now you need to go to Michigan State University. CJ, where's my, you see my master's degree anywhere? What about my PhD? Not in the office, not at church. You ain't seen it in my house. I didn't go to Michigan State to get a PhD. I went to Michigan State to learn the majority language. Listen to me very closely. When you graduate and you get a job, if you want to get paid, you never say no. You never say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done, you don't say it out loud. You let the broke folks say that. You let the folks they find first say that. You always say it can get done. Even if you don't think it can get done, just say it and try to make up something.
But every time I put on a dress shirt and button it up, I just feel, and I hear people say all the time, man, you look like you dressed to success. I'm like, is putting on a shirt and a tie dressed for success? I'm dressed for success. I'm getting paid. I'm dressed for success. I'm not dressed like he dressed, but I'm dressed the way I feel comfortable. I feel good being me. I feel good not to have to fight. Not, not only can I say no, I don't have to explain why I said it no more. It feels good being me. Because guess what? I can never be sweet being you. The majority of you are poor because you read poor stuff. You watch poor stuff. Bro, you just scrolling through like you ain't got a life. For real, some of y'all on Instagram, you're on there for 30 minutes. If I ask you what you saw, you don't even know. You just scrolling through. Rich people don't waste time. They realize it's their most important commodity. They don't watch a lot of TV. They don't do a lot of entertainment. If they're not working, they're studying their craft and getting better at their craft. So I need you to stop having the poverty mindset. So when I quit my job to be an entrepreneur, my mom was like, whoa, what are you doing? I was like, I'm quitting. My mom was like, don't you dare quit. You're gonna embarrass me. You got a wife and kids. Does YouTube have insurance? Does YouTube have a 401k? And I was like, yo, ma, I ain't trying to be funny and I ain't trying to be disrespectful, I love you. But you can't teach me how to be a millionaire because you're not. You come from the working class and I'm not mad at you, ma. We wouldn't be where we are without you. But you told me that every generation is supposed to get better. So I'll take your values, but I won't take your work ethic. Because rich people don't work, they think. Poor people go, clock in, I make this much an hour. Rich people go, I put them to work, and I make this much an hour. <laughs> See, what happens is you're working for you and your family, one, they got 40 of you working at one time. So they're giving you 20%, and then they're keeping the 80% off of 15,000 people. So what you have to decide is, are you gonna keep being the 99% or are you ready to be a part of the 1%?